We'll now move into research, and this next story is very troubling. It says, why your Wi-Fi router doubles as an Apple AirTag. This is a very in-depth article from Brian Krebs. Highly recommend checking it out. The extremely TLDR, just too long, didn't read, is that Apple and Google both use Wi-Fi to triangulate a user's GPS in a more efficient way so that it doesn't have to rely on the GPS chip. We've talked about this before. This is a Fairly well-known thing, I think, but if you have Wi-Fi turned on when you're driving around or walking around, it will basically ping nearby Wi-Fi. And I, I, again, this is one of those things that I don't understand the technicals, but it allows it to be more efficient. So I, I'm going to get the numbers here wrong, but I've, I've asked a friend before who has insider knowledge. And if you're going off just the GPS chip, you can get like within a couple meters of someone's exact location. If you're going off the Wi-Fi, you can get like within inches, I think he said or like a couple feet. The difference in granularity is pretty staggering. The problem is that for both companies, they don't just use this data because it'd be one thing if they're like, oh, I'm going to use this data to like better position myself, but everything's staying on the device. Instead, they transmit identifiable, persistent, and trackable data back like the access points Mac, which is also called the BSSID. I forget what that stands for, but it's a, it's basically the Mac address from what I'm told. This is according to two researchers at the University of Maryland who theorized they could use the verbosity of Apple's API to map the movement of individual devices into and out of virtually any defined area of the world. They said they spent a month early in their research continuously querying the API, asking it for the location of more than a billion BSSIDs generated at random. They learned that while only about 3 million of those were known to Apple's Wi-Fi geolocation API, Apple also returned an additional 488 million BSSID locations already stored in its WPS from other lookups. Plotting the locations between November 2022 and November 2023, researchers saw they had a near global view of the locations tied to more than 2 billion Wi-Fi access points. The map showed geolocated access points in nearly every corner of the globe, apart from almost the entirety of China, vast stretches of desert wilderness in Central Australia and Africa, and deep in the rainforests of South America. In March of this year, Apple quietly updated its website to note that anyone can opt out of having their location of their wireless access points collected and shared by Apple by appending underscore no map to the end of the Wi-Fi access points name. Adding underscore no map to your Wi-Fi network name also blocks Google from indexing its location. So I think since it's collecting the MAC address, I would assume, but in the comments, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. If you have a router or a script that can like spoof a MAC address and and randomize it periodically, that probably helps. I think this is especially concerning for people who move or travel a lot. So like apartment dwellers, if you're moving every year or every couple of years, you probably take your router with you or you should. I, I highly recommend buying your own router that you can put like, you know, VPNs and DDWRT and stuff like that on it instead of just using whatever router the the ISP gives you. And the thing that sucks is like, if you change, like I can go in right now and change this, but now I have to reconnect two computers, reconnect one, two, three, like four phones, reconnect a laptop, reconnect a TV, two TVs, two Raspberry Pis. Yes, I have a surprisingly connected home. It's a pain for people to have to reconnect these things. A tablet. I forgot we have a tablet. Like there's all these things that we would have to reconnect. Yes, it's worthwhile. And then also I have to go update the freaking QR code for the guest Wi-Fi because I would have to update that too. It's unfortunate, you know? And the thing that really sucks in my opinion is uh, this now makes you stand out because it's one thing to put a generic Wi-Fi name. And I know everybody tries to be clever with their Wi-Fi name. Stop using FBI surveillance van. It's not clever. It's played out to death. I recommend against people hiding their SSID because it's very easy to find. I don't think you're going to attract attention from anyone who actually matters, but I think there's a really good chance that if, especially again, if you live in an apartment complex, somebody in the area might be like learning how to hack and they might notice like, oh, you have a hidden Wi-Fi network. Why is that? And they might take, curiosity. And it's relatively easy to crack into some of those things. It's just kind of like attracting unnecessary attention. And I think that goes for this too. If you're, you know, Nate's iPhone driving around, nobody's going to notice that. But if you're Nate's iPhone underscore no map, I worry that that's going to make you stick out more. It really just goes back to threat modeling, I guess, at the end of the day. I'm also thinking specifically of like, I mentioned I use my Calyx hotspot a lot, like a lot, a lot. 
And I'm really thinking of those people who have gone all in on the like, I don't have a SIM card, I just use a Calyx hotspot to phone kind of people like Naomi Brockwell claims to do that. And it's like, so now everywhere you go, your location is being pinged back to Apple and Google, which I guess one could make the argument like it's doing that anyways, because it already has a GPS chip on it and it's frequently calling home, but it just makes it more accurate. And it's a second data point. Like it's bad enough they're doing it with the GPS chip, but now they're doing it with your router too. It makes me uncomfortable. It's it's that simple. You know, this is a privacy podcast. This is an invasion of privacy. It makes me uncomfortable. So I'm going to be honest. I'm probably going to do the no map thing, but it's really up to you guys if that's right for you or not. But just be aware that this is a thing now. Hey there, thanks for watching this surveillance clip. This is actually a clip from our main podcast surveillance report where we talk about privacy and security news on a weekly basis to keep you safe as often as we can. If you want something to listen to while you're driving to work, maybe check out the full channel at Surveillance Report, or you can stay subscribed to Surveillance Clips. Either way, we'll see you next time.